try, catch, and try, and log the data on your computer and send back a reply so your other entity can log this exact same event. And now you're getting the same log event on both systems and you should be able to figure out where the the catch is in your in your logic. But let's go back up to what I'm trying to do. If word one of the data is ACK, then I'm sending an acknowledgement of something. And I said a little, then this is again part of my logic, you don't have to use this, but I'm setting a custom property of this stack to whatever the current tick is. And then I'm putting space and then word after the data so that I'm logging this for me. So if it's not an acknowledgement, I just go ahead and stuff the data. I just go ahead and, in this case, set the previous ticks to whatever the number is. This way I can tell how the turnaround time is working between these two computers, whether they're in the same city or across the country. But I am handling an incoming packet with these three parameters, one of which is the data that was sent. Now at the end, no matter which one of these two open reply, open reply, I'm doing the little maintenance by close the socket because that's going to keep me running better. So this is my entire receive a packet, do something with it, and send a reply back to where it came from and close the socket so we don't have these extra ones floating around. Hopefully this makes some sense at this moment. And the my log is a handler which I'm going to show you right down here. I know we're getting close to the end of this demonstration here, but I'm going to give you a few more line breaks here. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. All we're doing is saying we want to put this into a header or into a into a place where we can keep track of these events. Oops, it's still going to go. There we go. We got it up there. And it's formatted for me to go back and check did things happen the way and the way I wanted them to. Now you see here I'm using my global Z data append. What's nice about the global in this case is both of these stacks can update the same global and as they tuck information in, I can see which happened first, second, third. So I'm going to take one quick moment here to look at the client script. And you'll see it's very similar. You'll see that we're doing a start we're checking for the same conditions. Are, do we have sockets we have to close and get rid of? We're going to do a reset. We're going to wait. Then we come down and what we're doing in this case, instead of listening, we're sending. So what we're doing is opening, and I'll open it up here, a datagram socket and sending a message. In client mode, you basically want to figure out what to send to the server, and the server responds. It either stores data, collects it, it relays data, reformats it. It may even send back a report because you're asking for what's happening in the other computers. A lot of what we did in our system was relay information and reformat. UDP is so fast, and it surprised me how quick it was, we had three data sources which were theoretically synchronized in the same, but they came from different computer systems, and they weren't always the same. Some were slower or faster, some had slightly different information, and we had to resolve what the best, freshest stuff was. One of the computers would send 5 to 25 packets per second UDP. And when I wrote this in, in, at the time it was revolution, of course, one of my questions was, wow, can I keep up with all of that? And it turned out I not only could keep up with all of those packets coming in, 